Today we're going to talk about a very, very important part of chemistry, and that being um, a new topic called stoichiometry. And stoichiometry is essentially, um, it's, uh, we're, going to, we're going to take the mole road concept, the concept of moles, and we're going to kind of merge it with the concept of balanced equations. And um, with that, it allows us to do some very important things. So this is a, the first ser series of videos, and this is going to be stoichiometry moles to moles. So we'll start off with a definition of what is stoichiometry. And it's the portion of chemistry that studies the relationship between the amounts of reactants and products. So we're looking at amounts, and those amounts can be anything from um, moles to grams to liters, if we're at STP of gas, to particles, atoms, molecules, or formula units. It allows us to transfer um, between uh, reactants and products. Like to, we like to say stoichiometry is, is it, it lets us know how much of, of a reactant is needed for a chemical reaction and how much of a product will be produced in a chemical reaction. Think of it, think of it like a recipe for a chemical reaction. If we want um, a certain amount, stoichiometry could help us out. So we're going to start off with a balanced equation here and just, just kind of go over a couple of things about this balanced equation. So here we, we, have, um, we have two, we could say moles of sodium reacting with one mole of hydrochloric acid in the aqueous form and it's gonna and those are both our reactants and on our product side we are gonna have two moles of sodium chloride and also having one mole of um, hydrogen gas being produced over here on um, on the product side so again stoichiometry will allow us to to um, determine exactly how many moles are going to be needed for a chemical reaction, how many moles are going to be produced in a chemical reaction, um, and then we'll take those moles and convert them to grams and things like that. So um, you will need your mole road map out for this, uh, for this lecture, so if you do not have one, please see um, me and I'll give you another copy of that. Mole road map is very helpful to use for stoichiometry. So I'm going to scroll down here a little bit. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this mole road map. Now, remember, this mole road map allowed us to go um, from, you know, things like grams to moles to particles and things like that. And if, if you have a fresh mole road map, I highly recommend that you add some of your units on here. You know, you would definitely want to have liters up at, on volume, and you want to have atoms or your mo molecules or formula units um, over there. And then down here for mass, of course, you want to have grams. Now, we're going to add one thing more to our mole road. super important to add. And that is we're going to start here at the mole, and we're going to add one more step. We're going to kind of go out, and we're going to go right back to the mole. So add this on your, add, add this on your uh, mole road map. And there's a conversion factor, just like there's always a conversion factor to go from one thing to another. So if we ever need to go from one mole to a different mole of something, we're always going to put our unknown over our known right there. And where do we get these numbers from? These numbers here come from our balanced equation. They're the coefficients from our balanced equation. So um, with that said, let's jump right into some stoichiometry and do a sample problem here. So um, I have listed right here a sample problem where I have 5.5 moles of sodium is being reacted with excess hydrochloric acid and it is going to, and we're asked for how many moles of H2 gas are going to be produced at STP. Okay, so a couple things that we want to identify here in this problem, and so let's, let's identify. So first off, I want to identify my known. What is my given quantity? And so it says 5.5 moles of sodium. That is my given quantity. That's my known. Okay? It also says it's reacted with excess HCl. Now, when we see excess HCl, it means basically just ignore HCl. There's plenty of HCl to go around. We'll never run out of it. That's what excess means. And so let's just ignore it in this problem. We'll get down the road where they give us a certain amount of one reactant and a certain amount of product, and we'll have to take that into account. But as long as it says excess, we're fine. Just ignore it. Then it asks us how many moles of H2 gas will be produced at STP. So we are looking for, we're looking for moles. So we have our known, and we have our unknown. Okay, and then it says produced at STP. That just gives us permission to use the mole road. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to make a, a picket fence and we're going to put our known which is 5.5 .5 moles of Na there and then and then we're going to put our unknown just like we always do right here moles of H2 so this picket fence essentially is going to tell us where to start on the mole road and where to end on the mole road and so as you can see we're going to start at moles and we're going to end at moles now if we start and end at moles of different substances you notice how this is sodium it's a different substance than hydrogen anytime we start at one substance and end at a different substance we now have to go down to our mole road and we need to go around the unknown over the known for the balance equation, this little roundabout thing right here. Now, again, remember we get, we're going to get the numbers from our balanced equation. So all I have to do here is I'm going to come back up here to my picket fence and where it says moles of H2, I just need to go up to find H2 in the balance equation. Here's H2 right here and I already decided that there was one mole of it because that's the coefficient. So I'm going to put the number one right here. Again, that came from the balanced equation. Now, I'm going to take on this mole road, it says at the bottom we're going to put the known. Well, our known in this case was Na. That was our known. We've determined that in the, in the equation. And this is going to be moles of sodium. Again, we're going to go up to our balanced equation for sodium. And here's sodium right here in our balanced equation. And the coefficient is 2, so I'm going to put a 2 right here. And so this becomes my setup. Notice I can cancel out units. Moles of Na is going to cancel out with moles of Na. Same unit top and bottom cancels out. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply 5.5 by 1. And then I'm going to divide it by 2. So let me grab my calculator. Of course we do that without a calculator, but we'll, we can use one as well. Now, I get an answer of 2.75 on my calculator. Um, of course we have to take into consideration significant figures. We have two sig figs here. Our answer's got three sig figs. So we're going to round our answer off to two sig figs, which is going to be 2.8 moles of H2 gas are going to be formed. And that's going to be our answer in this very first problem. OK. Now let's go on to another problem and show you how, how we can kind of attack something from a different way. We're going to use the same exact balanced equation here. Um, again, pull this up a little bit here. Um, again, we're going to use the mole road. And again, I'm going to have that same um, roundabout here where I put my unknown over my known. And this is going to be our coefficient from our balanced equation. OK. So let's, let's look at this problem here and see if we can identify some things. It says, how many moles of HCl will be required to completely consume 15 moles of sodium? OK, so these are both reactants. And we can do that because using stoichiometry, we can go anywhere on the mole road. We can go products to reactants, reactants to reactants, reactants to products, products to products, anywhere we want to go. So we are given a known of 15 moles of sodium. There's our known. And we are looking for how many moles of HCl? How many moles of HCl? In this problem, they didn't have any, didn't have a, an excess, no big deal. And so there's our unknown. Okay, so we're going to put our, our known quantity right here at the top, 15 moles of sodium. We're going to put our unknown quantity right here, where we always put our unknown quantity, moles of HCl. Now, again, this is one of those problems where we start with moles, we end with moles, and they're moles of different substances. Na, Na to HCl, and that means we have to go around the unknown over the known from the mole ratio. We call it a mole ratio. So moles of HCl, we're going to look up at the balanced equation. There's HCl in the balanced equation. We have one mole. Then we're going to take our known, and we're going to put it on the bottom, moles of Na. I'm going to get the number right here from my balanced equation, and I look up to the balanced equation. 
there's sodium, and so we're going to put two moles in right like that. And now, we're going to cancel some units out. Moles of Na cancels with moles of Na. They're the same, so they cancel out. We multiply 15 times 1, we get 15. 15 divided by 2 gives us 7.5. And 7.5 is 2 sig figs, and 15 is 2 sig figs. Our unit is moles of HCl. So if we had 15 moles of Na sodium, we, it would take half the amount to, um, of HCl to get rid of it, consume it all because of the balanced equation. It is a 2 or 1 to 2 ratio, rather. That is how we do the, the start of stoichiometry um, on the most basic level, which is a moles-to-moles -moles problem.